Computational chemistry is a branch of chemistry that uses computer simulation to assist in solving chemical problems. It uses methods of theoretical chemistry, incorporated into efficient computer programs, to calculate the structures and properties of molecules and solids. Its necessity arises from the fact that, apart from relatively recent results concerning the hydrogen molecular ion, the quantum many-body problem cannot be solved analytically, much less in closed form. While computational results normally complement the information obtained by chemical experiments, it can in some cases predict hitherto unobserved chemical phenomena. It is widely used in the design of new drugs and materials. Examples of such properties are structure, absolute and relative energies, electronic charge distributions, dipoles and higher multipole moments, vibrational frequencies, reactivity or other spectroscopic quantities, and cross-sections for collision with other particles. The methods employed cover both static and dynamic situations. In all cases the computer time and other resources increase rapidly with the size of the system being studied. That system can be a single molecule, a group of molecules, or a solid. Computational chemistry methods range from highly accurate to very approximate. Highly accurate methods are typically feasible only for small systems. Ab initio methods are based entirely on quantum mechanics and basic physical constants. Other methods are called empirical or semi-empirical because they employ additional empirical parameters. Both ab initio and semi-empirical approaches involve approximations. These range from simplified forms of the first principles equations that are easier or faster to solve, to approximations limiting the size of the system, to fundamental approximations to the underlying equations that are required to achieve any solution to them at all. For example, most ab initio calculations make the Born-Oppenheimer approximation, which greatly simplifies the underlying Schrödinger equation by assuming that the nuclei remain in place during the calculation. In principle, ab initio methods eventually converge to the exact solution of the underlying equations as the number of approximations is reduced. In practice, however, it is impossible to eliminate all approximations, and residual error inevitably remains. The goal of computational chemistry is to minimize this residual error while keeping the calculations tractable. In some cases, the details of electronic structure are less important than the long-time phase space behavior of molecules. This is the case in conformational studies of proteins and protein ligand binding thermodynamics. Classical approximations to the potential energy surface are employed, as they are computationally less intensive than electronic calculations, to enable longer simulations of molecular dynamics. Furthermore, cheminformatics uses even more empirical methods like machine learning based on physiochemical properties. One typical problem in cheminformatics is to predict the binding affinity of drug molecules to a given target. History Building on the founding discoveries and theories in the history of quantum mechanics, the first theoretical calculations in chemistry were those of Walter Heitler and Fritz London in 1927. The books that were influential in the early development of computational quantum chemistry include Linus Pauling and E. Great Wilson's 1935 Introduction to Quantum Mechanics, with Applications to Chemistry, I. Ring, Walter and Kimball's 1944 Quantum Chemistry, Heitler's 1945 Elementary Wave Mechanics, with Applications to Quantum Chemistry, and later Coulson's 1952 textbook Valence, each of which served as primary references for chemists in the decades to follow. With the development of efficient computer technology in the 1940s, the solutions of elaborate wave equations for complex atomic systems began to be a realizable objective. In the early 1950s, the first semi-empirical atomic orbital calculations were carried out. Theoretical chemists became extensive users of the early digital computers. A very detailed account of such use in the United Kingdom is given by Smith and Sutcliffe. 
The first ab initio Hartree-Fock calculations on diatomic molecules were carried out in 1956 at MIT, using a basis set of Slater orbitals for diatomic molecules. A systematic study using a minimum basis set and the first calculation with a larger basis set were published by Ransell and Nesbitt respectively in 1960. The first polyatomic calculations using Gaussian orbitals were carried out in the late 1950s. The first configuration interaction calculations were carried out in Cambridge on the EDSAC computer in the 1950s using Gaussian orbitals by boys and co-workers. By 1971, when a bibliography of ab initio calculations was published, the largest molecules included were naphthalene and azulene. Abstracts of many earlier developments in ab initio theory have been published by Schaefer. In 1964, Huckel method calculations method for the determination of electron energies of molecular orbitals of pi electrons in conjugated hydrocarbon systems of molecules ranging in complexity from butadiene and benzene to ovaline were generated on computers at Berkeley in Oxford. These empirical methods were replaced in the 1960s by semi-empirical methods such as CNDO. In the early 1970s, efficient ab initio computer programs such as ATMOL, Gaussian, IBMOL, and POLYAYTOM began to be used to speed up ab initio calculations of molecular orbitals. Of these four programs, only Gaussian, now massively expanded, is still in use, but many other programs are now in use. At the same time, the methods of molecular mechanics, such as MM2, were developed, primarily by Norman Allinger. One of the first mentions of the term, computational chemistry, can be found in the 1970 book Computers and Their Role in the Physical Sciences by Sidney Fernbach and Abraham Haskell Taub, where they state, it seems, therefore, that computational chemistry can finally be more and more of a reality during the 1970s. Widely different methods began to be seen as part of a new emerging discipline of computational chemistry. The Journal of Computational Chemistry was first published in 1980. Computational chemistry has featured in a number of Nobel Prize awards, most notably in 1998 and 2013. Walter Cohn, for his development of the density functional theory, and John Popple, for his development of computational methods in quantum chemistry, received the 1998 Nobel Prize in Chemistry. Martin Karplus, Michael Levitt and Ari Warshell received the 2013 Nobel Prize in Chemistry for the development of multi-scale models for complex chemical systems fields of application. The term theoretical chemistry may be defined as a mathematical description of chemistry, whereas computational chemistry is usually used when a mathematical method is sufficiently well developed that it can be automated for implementation on a computer. In theoretical chemistry, chemists Physicists and mathematicians develop algorithms and computer programs to predict atomic and molecular properties and reaction paths for chemical reactions. Computational chemists, in contrast, may simply apply existing computer programs and methodologies to specific chemical questions. There are two different aspects to computational chemistry. Computational studies can be carried out to find a starting point for a laboratory synthesis, or to assist in understanding experimental data, such as the position and source of spectroscopic peaks. Computational studies can be used to predict the possibility of so far entirely unknown molecules or to explore reaction mechanisms that are not readily studied by experimental means. Several major areas may be distinguished within computational chemistry. The prediction of the molecular structure of molecules by the use of the simulation of forces, or more accurate quantum chemical methods, to find stationary points on the energy surface as the position of the nuclei is varied, storing and searching for data on chemical entities, identifying correlations between chemical structures and properties, 
computational approaches to help in the efficient synthesis of compounds, computational approaches to design molecules that interact in specific ways with other molecules, accuracy. The words exact and perfect do not appear here, as very few aspects of chemistry can be computed exactly. However, almost every aspect of chemistry can be described in a qualitative or approximate quantitative computational scheme. Molecules consist of nuclei and electrons, so the methods of quantum mechanics apply. Computational chemists often attempt to solve the non-relativistic Schrödinger equation, with relativistic corrections added. Although some progress has been made in solving the fully relativistic Dirac equation, in principle, it is possible to solve the Schrödinger equation in either its time-dependent or time-independent form, as appropriate for the problem in hand. In practice, this is not possible except for very small systems. Therefore, a great number of approximate methods strive to achieve the best trade-off between accuracy and computational cost. Accuracy can always be improved with greater computational cost. Significant errors can present themselves in ab initio models comprising many electrons, due to the computational expense of full relativistic inclusive methods. This complicates the study of molecules interacting with high atomic mass unit atoms, such as transitional metals and their catalytic properties. Present algorithms in computational chemistry can routinely calculate the properties of molecules that contain up to about 40 electrons with sufficient accuracy. Errors for energies can be less than a few kilojoule per mole. For geometries, bond lengths can be predicted within a few picometers and bond angles within 0.5 degrees. The treatment of larger molecules that contain a few dozen electrons is computationally tractable by approximate methods such as density functional theory. There is some dispute within the field whether or not the latter methods are sufficient to describe complex chemical reactions, such as those in biochemistry. Large molecules can be studied by semi-empirical approximate methods. Even larger molecules are treated by classical mechanics methods that employ what are called molecular mechanics. In QMMM methods, small portions of large complexes are treated quantum mechanically, and the remainder is treated approximately.